the debate with Jonathan Porter. There's lots more to come up. So, how often do you get a sort of convenience delivery by someone on a motorbike or a bike or a fast food or a pizza? And then if you do get those, how often do you check that actually the person delivering it is the same as you were told on your app, on your mobile phone or your iPad? I suspect not a lot. Well, the answer is, folks, between 40 and 50% of the time, it's not the person you were told it is. Just think about that for a moment. Then you might wonder, asylum seekers, when they go into hotels, what do they do all day? I mean, they're not allowed to work. They can read, maybe watch some, some movies or stuff, but they're not allowed to work. Well, when you go to those hotels in the middle of the day, there's no one there. They've all gone. Where do you think they've gone? So here's the thing. I'll tell you where they're going. They're going to work. Because when they arrive at a hotel, they get given, I'm told by charities, they get given a push bike. That's very nice. So with the push bike, what they're doing is actually, they're going to start working for some of these delivery companies. That there is a picture of hundreds of bikes at a hotel in the Midlands, all push bikes. That was about the middle of the day. It was a filthy day when I was there checking this out. And the reason that those push bikes are all still there, but there's no one in the hotel, is because what's happening is that people with delivery accounts for all the big delivery companies, the Deliveroo's, the Just Eats, the Uber Eats, legitimate UK citizens, they get these accounts. But then people worked out you can rent them for between 50 to 70 pounds a week. That's the going rate. If you look online, you'll see lots and lots of adverts that look a bit like this. That's one, and there's hundreds of these all over social media. The general rate, as I say, is between 50 and 70 pounds a week. And so what happens is that the asylum seekers are renting these accounts because they don't have bank accounts, they're not allowed to work. And so they then get given the login details on the app for these fast food deliveries. They then go and do the deliveries. Now, they've got no cost, they don't have any tax to pay. So very quickly, using their push bikes, within two or three weeks, they've got enough cash to go and buy an e-bike, which of course means that they can deliver much faster. That was in the same town as a whole group of e-bikes outside a food court in a shopping centre, where I went to see this going on. So with the e-bikes, you're going that much faster to deliver it, which means you can earn more through the day. But of course, this is not legal but they're able to do it. What's the net effect of this? You might say, well, what's wrong with that? I'll tell you what's wrong with that. Is that when you've got a huge increase in the number of people doing this in a town, the price of the delivery price drops dramatically. So someone I spoke to in that town in the Midlands who used to be earning, uh, a British citizen was earning 180 pounds a day doing these fast food deliveries. All of a sudden, the migrant hotel fills up they're working illegally, they're getting their e-bikes. This person only had a push bike. She obviously has costs to pay. She has tax to pay. So her earnings went from 180 pounds a day down to 50 pounds a day. At which point she said, this is not fair. I'm earning less than if I go on benefits. So she went back on benefits. You see what's happening here? This is illegal, it's not right. So you've got the asylum seekers renting the accounts. You've also got British citizens making a whole load of extra cash on the side, 50, 60, 70 pounds a week for one account, then opening 10 accounts. Nice work if you can get it. I wonder if the taxman sees any of that. So this is taking jobs from British workers and it is depressing wages. Now, just take a look at this, which has been out on social media. This is Omar. This little video here. This is Omar in Europe. Having quite a nice time, looks like he's some island. This is him in a shopping center, we've blocked out. There he is, he looks brilliant, well dressed, comfortable Omar, he's sort of skimming some, uh, oh, there he is, sort of sitting on some grass. He looks pretty happy, he's pretty safe. And there he is, it's Paris, yes, there's the Eiffel Tower. Very nice indeed. And then he comes on a boat. And I think we've got some footage of Omar on a boat. We blocked out his face for legal reasons, but he is on a boat coming across the English Channel. There he is, there's other people 
on the boat. We'll come back. There's another part of that story I'm going to come back to tomorrow. Different elements to this. And then the last video I've got for you is Omar in this very same hotel in the Midlands. And there he is. And that is, ladies and gentlemen, that is 20 and £10 notes that he's earned, I believe, illegally, working on these fast food companies, working in fast food shops. Yes, there he is. And look at all that cash. So no costs, loads of cash, no tax, and British workers having their wages depressed. This is really, really serious. And this is going on all over the country, where there are migrant hotels and fast food outlets nearby. And the scale of this, and the 150 plus thousand people, the backlog, but not yet allowed to work, my gut is 100,000 plus could well be illegally working. £2,000 a person lost tax revenue, that's 200 million quid. Tens of thousands of British people are not able to earn, they're back on benefits, that's hundreds of millions more. All of this going on, and I believe it's going on with the knowledge and awareness of these massive multinational delivery companies. Absolutely. Because they actually, in their terms and conditions, they say to the main account holder, you can have a substitute account holder as long as it's you, it's your responsibility to check they've got the legal right to work. Well, you can guess what's happening, can't you? I think they are complicit with this. And I think this is a huge, huge issue. And that we're all losing out, the Treasury's losing out, we're paying more tax. Well, I'm delighted now to be joined 